Okay, let's go to uh, Mr. Beauchamp at the beginning. And again, we want some debate between the other two and back and forth. Uh, how do you feel about border security? And what would you propose as a solution to the illegal alien problem? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to close the border. You close it in physical barriers, an area of high traffic, in areas of low traffic where there's large tracts of desert. We've got Fort Huachuca sitting there. You can use unmanned drone aircraft. We're fighting a war right now with insurgencies. What a great training tool it would be to use those drone aircraft to pick up the illegal immigrants coming across the border. They're using that to identify you're killing two birds with one stone. You have to solve the border problem by sealing it before you can start sending people home. You, you can't send them home and leave the border wide open. That's like standing at the base of Roosevelt Dam, and it has a leak, and you stand there, and when your bucket gets full, you run to the top, and you pour it in the reservoir up there. It doesn't solve any problem. It just costs us billions of dollars, and it's not a solution. Money is not the solution. There has to be a program. Seal the border, then send everybody home. Breaking the law, you just don't benefit that. There would be no amnesty. Anyone to challenge that? I would. Seal the border, I'm good with that. But if we sent 12 million people home, who's going to choose which ones? Are they all equally uh, aff afflicting us? Someone once said, we don't have an illegal immigration problem. We have a welfare problem. And when we offer freebies to ourselves and to anyone without identification, we're putting a big sign up that says, come for the freebies. Any way you get here is all fine. So it can't just be the sealing of the border, which we must do. Seal the stream running into the pool. Seal it. Send the felons home. Get them out of here. But there are lots of good people whose parents came here illegally, but the children have been raised here. And when we have an Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, who is exporting his radical uh, ideals throughout the hemisphere, when you have Daniel and Humberto Ortega running Nicaragua, and Humberto, uh, just prior to the, the, the presidency of Chamorro, proclaimed that his goal as the president of the Defense Force was to send a million Mexicans across the border with an AK-47 to kill 10 Americans apiece. When you have that type of uh, unrest now occurring in Peru, in Bolivia, in Ecuador, some in Colombia with FARC, and it's moving northward, we, have, we cannot destabilize Mexico. We must not exacerbate what's almost on the point of being a failed state. So there has to be, we have to work very carefully to make sure that country is fortified, or we will have an Hugo Chavez on the other side of the gallows. Paul? I've got to tell you, the, the paper today said probably one of the, the 30 uh, strongest men in the world was a drug, drug cartel out of Mexico. you got a war of terror south of there. It, it, Mexico's already destabilized, folks, one way or the other, how you're going to look at it. And the wall ain't going to do anything to anybody. Tell me one point in history where the wall actually made a difference. It's never made a difference. How can you put National Guard troops on the border and allow them to only watch? and be sitting ducks. How can you do that? Please tell me and explain that to me. Your war on terror starts south, south of this border. It also starts on your ports. It's not just from Mexico. All our ports, we don't even control. The Chinese, the, the foreign immigrants that come from our borders, and also now through Canada. You have to have a comprehensive plan all the way around. Oh, any other retort? Well, well, sure. I mean, I'll actually give you the comprehensive plan, since Mr. Gosar so eloquently put that we need one. The plan is you cut off the benefits for people who don't pay any money into the tax system that come into our country and reap the benefits of our hard work, and they take our money from us, and they stay. You, you eliminate those benefits. That's their incentive to go home. When our economic crisis hit, everybody went home. They all went across the border. There weren't any jobs. That's what you have to do. They'll go across the border. Then you put the wall up, and then you send everybody else home who doesn't belong here. It doesn't matter felon or non-felon. It's citizen and non-citizen. It's not a matter of when they broke the law. If they broke it when they came in here when they weren't a citizen. Mr. Gosar. I think that's wonderful and great. But i got to tell you, you also have a number of, of people in the southern part of the state that use worker programs. 
You have to start looking at the worker program so that there's some ability for people to come in this country to rightfully work. And maybe there's an alternative for them through a work program to get their citizenship. I've got to tell you, you have to start looking at this because I've got to tell you, you've got crops, you've got fields that won't get picked. And you are dependent upon it. You don't see that. And maybe what you've got to do is you've got to create a program that is just for the workers, but you have to make it something that benefits all of us. And Bob, I, okay, Mr. Bowers, you'd like I know that there are at least four bona fide work programs right now, uh, guest worker programs, that do work. They function, except they're supremely overtaxed. One allows 60,000 people. And those people work for six and a half months, go, on, go home for two and a half months, then can come back again. But we need more than that. And if we would combine, look at our immigration policies, my great-grandparents didn't have to go through that policy. They had to come through Ellis Island. They didn't have to go through that. This is a land of opportunity. But if we can make them work so that we know where people are, we know that their status. My own son-in-law, the Algon de Chihuahua, uh, he, he's a pro football player, was a pro football player, first Mexican to play in the Super Bowl. Bonafide American citizen, did it the right way. We don't want to slap him. I certainly don't want to slap him. <laughs> but we don't want to slap those folks who've done it right. But we need to make a bona fide, well thought program that allows people to come and work, but also incents them to go home and build their own countries. Mr. Bosham, you acted like you had maybe had a response, maybe? Yeah, it's called a workers' program. It's not called an illegal citizenship program. You're here to do your job, and then you go home. You don't get to stay and then you don't get to have your children, and you don't get to manipulate the 14th Amendment to the Constitution so that they instantly become citizens because that's not the way the 14th Amendment was drafted, and that's not the way it was intended. When you allow them to stay, you open the door for them to have their anchor babies who then become citizens, and then you get the great argument. If you send home the ones who aren't citizens, you're breaking up the family. No, I'm not breaking up the family. My position isn't to break the family up. They can take their children home with them. That's their choice to break the family up. That's not mine. But, but to sit here and say we need, to, we need to figure out a way and we've got these drug cartels in Mexico, thank you for making my point for why it is so important to close the border when you have the drug cartels sitting right there. Because if you think 12 million people can get into the country illegally, how many tons of drugs do you think they can bring in? Mr. Gosar. I think the whole policy has to come around. You know, my grandparents were immigrants. They came in right. Yes, they did. But you also have to look at, you know, this country was founded on immigrants. And you have to provide a comprehensive look at that. Not only here, but in their country that they're coming from. For crime any sakes, that's why they come here. Not just for the social handouts. They just want something better. For crime any sakes, does it take a rocket scientist to look at Mexico and tell me it's, it's, it's a sovereign state, but does it function? You look at the paper. I dare you to go back to read the paper today and look at this drug cartel. I talked to people in Douglas where they actually see murders going across over in Nogales. Or Nogales and Nogales, sorry. Um, but come on, folks. This is real. The, the, the worker program is failing at its best right now. I'll give you a quick example. In this district, Casa Grande, the dairy farmers, they use a, a, a migrant worker program. The problem is that six months it can't work. They need somebody longer there. So you need something that's not only literature-wise in, 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 in a compact form, but also in a relationship between Mexico and the United States. Mr. Beauchamp? And when we're discussing how we need all these people working, let me remind you that the unemployment rate is 10.2%, that the federal government has just extended unemployment benefits for 20 more weeks. But people who are out of work or who choose not to work in Yuma who are U.S. citizens should not go out and do the job that a migrant worker were doing. I say get out there and do the job. I didn't want to wash dishes, folks, but I did it. You go out there and you do the job those migrant workers are doing, and there's your incentive to get off of the government assistance because anybody who's worked in the field in Yuma in August knows it's a little warm. 